No, this is not a PSA for keeping your family jewels clean. This is a video on keeping the balance jewels clean or getting the balance jewels clean on most common watches, either vintage or antique pocket watches or wrist watches today. This is Pete from MyJewelryBench.com and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is explain the purpose of the balance jewels. Balance jewels are there to allow the lowest possible friction between the balance staff and the pinions, or in this case, hold jewels, or jewels with a little hole in it, and a cap jewel, which typically makes up most watch balance jewel systems. There are typically four jewels on a complete balance, the uh, upper and lower set. So you have a hold jewel and a, and a cap jewel, and those typically will allow the balance staff to run with as little friction as possible and that's the purpose of them we need to keep those clean because any dirt dried oil or debris will not allow our balance to turn properly with uh, little friction and will also slow down the watch so it's important to keep these jewels cleaned and if you have an older watch and you want to uh, take it apart and, and go through the service of it. Just throwing it in an ultrasonic cleaner is not enough. Typically with the balance jewels, um, you will need to take them out. Um, not all the time, but uh, most occasions. So this is an, kind of an important thing to talk about and I've never covered balance jewels in any other video as detailed as I'm gonna get here. There are several types of systems for balance jewels. Now we have most American watches and most good Swiss wrist watches will have a system of uh, a whole jewel and a balance jewel, one for the upper and one for the lower set, which would be on the full plate or the balance cock. So here we're looking at the uh, balance cock, and what we're gonna do is there's two screws on this American pocket watch that hold the jewels in place. Now this is probably a poor example because this watch has been butchered over time and somebody put in a different set of jewels here, um, modified everything to work with it, and I'm just kind of going to go with it, but the jewels are pretty dirty in this. And one of the symptoms of a dirty balance jewel or a set of jewels that is bad, for instance, if you run a watch face up and it keeps very good time and then you turn it over so it's face down and it slows down significantly or vice versa, uh, usually that's a set of jewels that might have some dried oil or debris in it. So to get those out, we have to remove these two little screws that hold them in place. Now, not all systems have screws. For instance, uh, here you can see the balance jewel here is held in with one screw on this Omega. And you'll notice that on most wristwatches, you'll usually have a balance system or a, or a release where only one screw holds a little plate inside that actually keeps the balance uh, hold jewel and cap jewel together. So, you know, things to consider always know when you're taking a watch apart, remember how it goes back uh, together? Because taking it apart, I would always take pictures of watches you're unfamiliar with. Uh, but, you know, again, most American pocket watches have this particular system and you know basically remove the two screws the upper and lower set should be kept you know together by themselves you don't want to mix them so the lower balance jewel and cap jewel are different sometimes from the upper cap and hold jewel typically i use a staking uh, set to pull out the the jewels and all you have to do is apply a little pressure these two jewels are kind of seated together in a brass setting 90 percent of the time sometimes gold settings you know, just remove them and start to examine them for little cracks, chips, or just dried debris. In this case, these balance jewels were just filthy. So they had to come out and be cleaned. And typically what I'll do is I'll clean them in mineral spirits and then I'll put them in the ultrasonic cleaner for about 10 minutes and then rinse them in, in, in some good watch rinse. If you don't have that at home, you can use 99% IPA and that'll work just as good. I like to warm up my uh, rinse solutions just to keep them uh, on, the, on the warmer side, it helps dry the parts out with less uh, debris ever coming here. Here can you see I'm using a parts basket. Now typically on a pocket watch, these will be like three or four millimeters in diameter. On a wrist watch, most cap jewels and hold jewels are no more, you know, as small as just under a millimeter and can be as large as maybe two millimeters. They are very, very small, so handle them with care and uh, be very delicate with them as they will break easy if you mistreat them. Now here you can see on the plate, on the full plate here, we're going to remove the two screws that hold the lower balance uh, jewels in place. And again, this is pretty common. I will show you some examples of why I 
think American pocket watches were still the best. Here's an example. We have a Swiss watch made probably before World War II. And you can see the Swiss kind of made their watches as cheap as possible back then. And that was pretty common in Europe. You just have a pressed in jewel. You didn't have a way to remove those jewels to be cleaned. So that's something to consider. And here's a Rolex, and this is a men's Rolex, where you have, and you'll see this on a lot of different watches, ISA, Seiko, uh, ETA. Um, you have the shockproof spring that holds the cap jewel and the and the whole jewel in place, and that's typically on both sides of the uh, watch balance staff. So, you know, those parts are very small. Those springs will break easy. So when you remove them, you want to be very, very careful with those. Now, once we get these jewels uh, cleaned up and ready to go back in, I want to show you there's some, there's some indications here that tell you which way the jewels go back in, but it's always a good idea to kind of memorize how they came out. You'll notice on this uh, whole jewel here, and I'm going to show you in a second when I pick it up with the tweezers, that there's a lip around one side of the brass ring where the whole jewel is pressed in place. And you can see what I mean. you got to be careful with them because they'll fly out of your tweezers. So here's that little lip if you look closely on the brass uh, holder, and that little lip will fall into the balance cock uh, or the balance bridge, whatever you choose to call it. Um, and there's a little lip on that side, so that indicates how this jewel goes back in if you're ever confused. So if we look closely, you'll see the inner lip on the balance cock. And the two meet up, the extruded end of the balance jewel, uh, the whole jewel, uh, will go in there and kind of protrude out from that. You'll, you'll see in a second when I put it back in. Again, take pictures if you're confused. Always uh, you know, keep a camera ready. We have them on our phones these days, so it's pretty easy to take pictures. Now, typically I put these back in. Again, I use a staking set with a hole in it so that I don't put any pressure on the jewel itself. I only want to put pressure on the brass to push that into the balance cock. Now, 99% of the time, these will fall, they'll go in very easily. There should be just a little bit of friction, but you should be able to push them in. You know, sometimes I'll even use the flat end of my tweezers to push them down. On the cap jewel on, on most American watches made, you know, 1950s or older, the screws that hold that jewel in place, you'll see two little notches on that brass ring that holds the cap jewel. And you want to line those up with the screw heads. Now, again, this watch, somebody really butchered it, and um, they replaced this with a jewel that works, but it isn't the original jewel for this watch. And because parts are getting harder to come by for some of these, I'm just, you know, cleaning them and reusing them. And in this case, uh, the, whoever modified this watch the first time did a good job of getting it all to work right. It just got dirty over time. So we're just going to go back and put these in. And you can see the screws kind of hold that capsule in place. And once it's ready, I'll put the adjustment rod back on. And that, uh, that little piece there will hold the end of the hairspring so that you can adjust, you can do like a micro adjustment to the timing. Again, what I'm doing here is just cleaning the jewels. I'm going to do a test fit and then I'm going to re-clean this because uh, of course I'm handling it. So, but I just need to make sure that these jewels aren't going to cause any friction. So I will usually do these parts two, sometimes three times if I run into an issue. Okay, so now that the jewel's in place, um, I don't put any oil on the balance wheel or the balance jewels when I do a test. I always run a test, especially after a new balance staff and uh, the jewels have been removed. What I want to do here is seat the balance bridge onto the frame of the watch with the balance wheel in place. I've removed the hairspring and the, um, the roller table. And what I want to do here is just run the balance and spin it and then test the watch up or down, upside down, right side up, to make sure that there's no friction on the jewels. And you'll, you'll see it. I use a hand blower to you know, turn your balance wheel. And what you're gonna look for is if the watch or the balance wheel wants to slow down uh, if it's in one side or if it's upside down or right side up, you wanna, you wanna test those jewels to make sure it doesn't uh, slow down in either position. And you'll feel it and you'll see it if it does, um, and you know, these are things that you can tell over time when you're working with a watch. Um, in this case, the watch ran perfectly upside down or right side up once the jewels were cleaned. So the next process for me would be to put the balance assembly back together 
And now that it's tested, I can go ahead and clean all the parts, uh, make sure that everything in the watch is immaculate, and then go ahead and uh, get it all tested and timed. And one more good way to test a watch before you remove it from the case is a lot of times I'll throw it on the watch timer, uh, a mechanical watch if it has you know, balanced jewels that are dirty, if you run it face up and let it run for about five minutes and then turn it face down and run it for five minutes. If the balance jewels um, indicate, if the watch indicates that it's running faster or slower in one position than the other, then you know one of the balance jewels is dirty or that you have a bad balance staff. So those are things that you can test for prior to removing all the parts from the watch. And that's a good idea. So make sure you get yourself a watch timer if you're gonna use uh, do pocket watch repairs as a hobby and uh, that'll help you. It'll save you a lot of time. Thanks for watching, guys. Like this video if you liked it. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and have a wonderful day.